I haven't said this in some time, and I want to say it again. You know, that's a, a polite question we ask each other, but here broadly when we <laughs> Broadway, <laughs> when we say, Tracy this morning was teasing me about that, I would have been on target were not for her teasing. <coughs> Yes, I, good, she's catching on, she's a quick study. <clears throat> when I first came to Braille, I don't even know what I was talking about, welcoming you, welcoming you. So when, when we say, how are you, we do mean, how are you, and we also mean it as the beginning of a conversation. So if you have something on your mind that you're thinking about, that you want to share with someone, or just need someone to talk to, that's why we ask that question, and that's why we're all here to be here for one another. You'll see that there are um, some additions to our prayer list this morning, um, a couple of them for Ed Hillegoss. I saw Ed come in. There he is, Ed's, whose nephew passed away, young nephew passed away last week, as well as for um, Taylor's family. Many of you know Taylor, and... Um, have been touched by her life and now by her death and um, those two close together. Doug and I had a death of a 28-year-old in our family during that time, so it's just one of those weeks when um, it just hurts, just hurts. So it's good to be with all of you today, good to be with all of you. It is the second Sunday in Lent. You'll see that the um, altar has changed because we're going to talk about how God gathers us to God and um, becomes a light for us, even in this dark world. So that's appropriate. We'll have communion today, as we will every Sunday in Lent, so you'll be invited down, and um, we'll share communion together. We do that during Lent because we're grounded in our faith when we come to this table. So, friends, I'm going to invite Penny Smith to come talk to us just for a bit now. And she's going to be up at the um, pulpit, so she'll need the pulpit mic. Can you hear me? Good. Good morning. Good morning. Um, as you have probably realized, Cindy was assigned and came out of retirement to be with us for just one year, and that young one year began last Ju July 1st. So this year has gone very quickly, hasn't it? And uh, we are looking to a new appointment coming July 1 of 22. Her, Cindy's last day with us, sadly, will be June 30th. In regard to her successor, I have the following announcement from our conference superintendent. To the congregation of Bradley United Methodist Church, Bishop Julius C. Trimble of the Indiana United Methodist Church and the appointive cabinet of the Indiana Conference announce the appointment of Reverend Stephen McPeak, and that's M-C-P-E-E-K as the senior pastor of Bradley United Methodist Church, effective July 1 of 22. My prayers are with you as we seek God's guidance in the next exciting chapter in the life and ministry of this congregation. Grace and peace, Reverend Dr. Elise Fulbright. The staff parish committee and I and uh, met with Dr. Fulbright and uh, Pastor Steve McPeak and his wife, Annette, last Tuesday evening. He has um, been, he will be coming to us from Kendallville, uh, Trinity Methodist Church in Kendallville, Indiana. This was the traditional take-in meeting for new appointments. We found Pastor Steve to be delightful and energetic, and he's very excited to come work with us here at Bradley and lead our congregation in ministries for the future. As, you know, as I know, you will have lots of questions about our new pastor, and though you will have an opportunity to learn more about him. We'll be putting some items in the, uh, so just watch the newsletter, the Facebook page, and the, uh, what else? The website, 
Oh, the Friday blast on email. Um, his first official day with us is July 1st. His uh, first day in the pulpit is July 10th as the conference requests that churches allow the pastors some cushion moving time in there at the end of June and 1st of July. So we'll, we'll be looking forward to that. Please be in prayer for Bradley for a successful transition and for Cindy and Doug and uh, Reverend Steve and his wife Annette as they all make these transitions for our benefit. And keep, keep, on as, keep on praying for Bradley as we continue serving and loving each other, one another, and God's people. Thank you. Well, that's kind of bittersweet to hear for me and for you, I know. And um, I don't know Dr. Um, Reverend McPeak, but I'm going to know him this week. Believe me, I've already been looking him up. Um, I'm going to spell his name for you because I had people stalking me for months before I came. So, um, <laughs> Mike Reeder, if you're out there, he's the, he's the king of stalk. So, if you need to know about Reverend McPeak, you can look that up. He's at Kendallville Trinity Church. Um, I'm so looking forward to talking with him and sharing what a wonderful place this is and what beautiful people you are. And we'll start that this week, the two of us. And he will be here before July 1st, just, you know, making the transition stuff. So um, I'm excited for you. I'm excited especially for him to meet you. Let's have a word of prayer. Holy God, you take us to places we never expect. And yet, when we open ourselves to your blessing and to your fullness, um, life is beautiful. And we pray for that, for Steve and Annette, and for their whole family. We pray for the Kendallville Church, who is hearing this morning that um, Steve is leaving. And we pray especially for the two of them that they might um, fully anticipate what a wonderful place this is. So open our hearts to him, O oh God. Let us be fully in your arms to receive him. We continue to pray for Bradley Church as it moves forward in such a way, delightful, faithful, inspiring way. We offer ourselves, we offer Steve and Annette to your tender care. Amen. Now, friends, it's time to worship. So may the peace of God be with you. Let us worship God. Please stand as you are able and join together in the call to worship. When confidence in our way of life is shaken, to whom do we turn for comfort? We look to friends, we cling to loved ones, we grope for answers in familiar and sacred. How shall we find strength to recover? Where do we find heart and hope to go on? Our hope is in God alone, our Savior, the shepherd in our souls, our sheltering fortress.
Please join together in our opening prayer. God of all creation, you are our protector. Of whom should we be afraid? In the shadow of the cross, you have built a refuge for all the slings of sin and death. You are the shelter that truly shields us. Yours is the embrace that fully claims us. You and nothing else are the stronghold of our life. Amen.
Please stand as you are comfortable for the scripture reading. Our lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. At the very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Let's have a moment of prayer. Holy God, focus us. Help our ears to listen, our minds to understand, and our hearts to absorb all that you would have, all that you would have us to absorb in this moment. So in the stillness of this moment, we give you thanks for your presence and for your word. Amen. Wednesday morning at Hitherto Coffee, there were 12 of us who gathered. If you haven't been with us, come join us. It's a a wonderful time of sharing, lots of laughters, occasionally a tear or two, but just a wonderful time to be with your Sunday morning friends in the middle of the week. It's just, just wonderful, so come on on Wednesday. This Wednesday, um, we began by talking first about Taylor and what a loss that was to our community when she passed away so suddenly and so young, 27 years old. And then Ed shared with us that his nephew in his late 30s passed away within the previous day or two. And I had received word that Kyle, a member of our extended family, had passed away also. That's a lot around a table of 12. (laughs) I'm thinking of other tables of 12 right now. It was a lot for us to absorb, and frankly, we couldn't absorb it. We just kind of talked about it and sat in silence for a while, and then as folks do, we moved on to other topics to talk about. But lingering in all of that were other images. So it's the elephant in the room every Sunday morning, but I'm going to go there this Sunday because we need to talk about it because Jesus says to us this morning, oh, how I long to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks. So let's take a look at some of these pictures. This is a picture of a hospital in Mariupol in the Ukraine, or in Ukraine. It's a hospital that treats expectant mothers and their newborn babies and other children. So when when this happened earlier this week, this is where babies and children were taken care of. So these children, the next set, have cancer. 
they were being treated in a subway station. The next picture is of those mamas and their new babies. Some of them were born in the hospital and managed to escape. Others of them were born in that subway station. Hmm. The next picture is a picture of a school. Now, school shouldn't look like that, but that's what school looks like in Kirkish. So now, children, instead of coming to this place where clearly they play football, they're being taught in another subway station by a faithful teacher who goes with them every day. The next picture is of an apartment building in Kiev. Nobody lives there anymore. Instead, the children and the moms are going to subway stations or hiding in the forest or trying desperately to get out of the country. And dads are saying goodbye to their children in train stations. And some children, some children get lost in the mix. That's heavy stuff, real heavy stuff. Tuesday, I met with 12 other people right up here around in a circle as we listened to the scripture lesson. And I, I read it several times through, and we had some silence in between and then some moments to talk about where our voices and where, what voices we heard in that beautiful passage about Jesus saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I want to gather you up. So some people heard Jesus say that, tell that fox to go away because I'm too busy. I got people to take care of. I kind of like that. That was Leroy. That's what Leroy thought. Other people were struck by the image of a mother hen. And others just by the words, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And the pain of Jesus saying that about a city that he longed to go to because it's the center of Jewish faith. And yet knowing if he went there, he was one of those prophets who would be killed. And that's heavy too. So let me share with you a bit of what um, a pastor named John Pavlovitz, maybe some of you read him, he's online a lot and has written lots of books. Here's what he says about the fatigue we feel in this heaviness. He says, you should be a little worry right now, weary right now. If you are, be grateful. That's a good thing. The weariness is confirmation that your heart is working properly. It is your humanity responding to so much inhumanity around you. It is evidence of your goodness still fighting to feel useless. To not feel anything would be a red flag. To not be brought to tears now and again would be a far more worrisome condition. To not occasionally be leveled by the sheer volume of the burdens in your orbit would be a symptom of a far greater sickness within you. It would mean that, like far too many people around you, someone else's pain is no longer of consequence to you. It would mean that you had learned how to anesthetize yourself from the suffering in your path, that you no longer feel emotionally tethered to other human beings. You should feel weary right now. I feel that way every day. Is anyone else feeling that way? It's just a heaviness. And you know, we all, there was COVID, and it's like it's forgotten. 
because all of the sudden we have these pictures and we have three young people who passed away in three days and we have other burdens that we share, burdens within our family, with our children, with siblings, with parents. We have burdens here in Greenfield and beyond. It seems like just right now, it's never ending, and yet I think back of stories that I've heard of other times when the world got close to war, like we are at right now, and how people pe persevered. So I'm wondering how we live in this time. So I want to try something with you. O oh, Kiev, O oh, Lviv, O oh, Kirshan, O oh, Odessa, how I long to gather you to me like a mother hen gathers her chick. O oh Biden, O oh Putin, O oh leaders of NATO, how I long to gather you as a mama hen gathers her chicks. O oh people in this country, I long for you too, and O oh people of Bradley who are feeling heavy right now because the world's heavy because our country's heavy, because sometimes our family, our work, our church feels heavy. Hear those words. Oh, how I long to gather you up like a mama hen gathers her babies. Doesn't that feel good right now? To know that someone's out there wanting to gather you up. And maybe in the stillness of some moment this week, you'll feel that gathering and it will make a difference. It will make something a little lighter, a light in the darkness that the darkness cannot overcome, you know. Maybe somewhere in the stillness this week you will feel gathered up and you will become light in this dark world. You know, that's happening in the darkest, in the darkest of our world right now. Tracy, will you show us the next slide? Look at this. On the second day after Russia began the invasion, these two soldiers decided it was time to get married. So they gathered all of their troops around them, and look at that. Look at that. They were gathered up and became light. And then look at this one. This is from the Friends Church, a group of people who have managed to make their way into Kyiv and are bringing fresh fruit and vegetables and water day after day after day. They're figuring out how to get into the mix, midst of Kyiv. They've been gathered up and became light. Sometimes light comes in other ways. just in singing, just in singing, just in leading songs, just in singing about the things you love. You're gathered up and you become light. And sometimes you're just a comedian <laughs> and then you're elected president and then without any effort at all, it seems, you become a hero. 
you're gathered up and become light. Sometimes it's more than one person. Sometimes it's what we do for others. This is, this is a group of people who looked at their country, Russia, and protested what they were doing. It's a bit of courage in that gathering up, isn't it? A lot of courage, but a lot of people gathered up. And boy, are they light for the Ukrainians and for us. And sometimes it's just a simple thing you need. So in Warsaw, Poland, a group of mothers left their strollers for the babies coming in. And now those babies are going to be gathered up. This is a picture from the United Methodist Church in Warsaw, a family who immigrated. And here's their story. The number of people who have fled from Ukraine to neighboring countries in the West already exceeds two million people. And yet, these are not simply streams or waves. They are in an unimaginable number of individual people, each with their own identity and history, who have set out to seek protection and refuge in a safe place. They were on their way west from Kharkiv, crossed the border into Poland, and came to Radom. In this city, south of Warsaw, the journey was suddenly interrupted. The mother could not continue because she was giving birth. Two days later, they arrived in Warsaw, where they, where they found refuge in the United Methodist Congregation, as more than 100 people had done in the days before. They sleep on mattresses placed in the church hall. They receive food, clothes, hygiene, products. And Pastor Malachi, they find a pastor with whom they communicate, even without knowing English. He listens to them, prays with them, reads the Bible with them, and bears the question with them. Where is God? On Sunday, when church services are celebrated, the mattresses are moved aside, but perhaps what happens during the week is at least as much worship as what we do on Sunday. So thanks to the support from the U.S. and Germany and Switzerland, the leaders of the UMC can buy mattresses, pillows, sleeping bags, shoes, clothes, and of course food. Most of the time, people stay in Warsaw for only two nights, get some rest, strengthen themselves, then they travel on. And then the next set of people come for refuge and strength and clothes. And that newborn baby in Warsaw, the one pictured here, her mother and father named her Miroslava. It means one who loves peace. That child and her family, and I imagine that congregation, have been gathered up and even in the midst, new birth, smiles, and a family who loves one another. That's what happens in the midst of heaviness when we allow ourselves to be gathered into the arms of Jesus, just as a mama hen gathers her babies. I invite you to that place. Sometimes the light comes from unexpected places, but why should we think it's unexpected? Because Jesus said, bring the children to me. So in the stillness of this moment, we're going to hear a little girl in a train station in Kiev singing, let it go. And while she does that, you feel yourselves gathered up because this is how Jesus talks to us. Теперь она решила исполнить вам песню для поднятия боевого духа. Амелия Анисович. Сейчас все не будут шуметь. Можно немножечко тишины? Пусть хорошая девочка для всех за 
Открой все чувства на замок Навечно отпусти И забудь, что прошло уже не вернуть Отпусти и забудь Новый день он кажет путь Не боюсь ничего Пусть бы шум ничто, холод всегда мне был по душе, а я иду все выше на ледяную пласть, и страха не винувшись, меня уж не догнать. Пора узнать, что я могу на помощь призову к себе во льдах навечно. Отпусти и забудь, что прошло уже не вернуть. Отпусти и забудь, новый день он кажет путь. Браво, браво, умница, умница. It is good to have a little child lead us, isn't it? So let's go where she's going, right into the arms of our Savior, and let us become light in this world, a beacon of hope, a beacon of peace, a beacon of God's love. So as the little child leads us, so may it be for us. Let us pray. Holy God, there is such heaviness in this world, and yet there our Savior stood inviting us to come to a place of comfort and of hope, of love, and of light. So let us not hesitate, but let us run to your arms, to the shelter of your wings, those same wings that were spread upon the cross. Help us, O oh God, to be like a little girl who can sing Let It Go when she's already let so much go. Let us join with the light of the world, let us join with your Son to bring hope and love and grace and mercy. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to use this offering time to kind of con compose ourselves a little bit here. Um, I'm going to invite the ushers to um, bring the offering down and remind you that you can give to support this little girl and other little children like that, and moms and dads and soldiers and people who are displaced um, by giving through Bradley Church. You can write on a check or on an envelope. They're not envelopes in the pews, I'm not certain. Um, you can drop by money um, anytime during the week, and we will have up this week, we're hopeful, um, on our website, a place for you to give on the giving page that will simply say Ukraine, U-M-C-O-R. Um, so I invite you to um, feel gathered up and to um, let light shine in this dark world.
needed. The Lord be with you. Let us give God our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to thank you and praise you everywhere and always, Almighty God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, through whom and with whom you have entered every place, even into human flesh. So, with every place that has known your presence. With earth and sky and sea, with unseen lands and familiar homes, with cosmic expanse and creaturely bodies, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Mighty fortress God, you are here. The stronghold of your love pervades our sacred stories. You sheltered prophets and psalmists, protected Abraham and Sarah, bringing them over many miles and many doubts to rest their faith in you. But most of all, you sent Jesus, a mothering hen whose arms outspread on the cross became sheltering wings for your beloved people. On the night before he died. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, "Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me." And after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying. This blood is the new, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering this table, the cross, the empty grave, we wait for him to return in glory as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen; Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts. Holy wisdom pervade every corner of this place and every crevice of our hearts. Bring us at last, with all the saints, to the promised land of your creation, where we may meet your glory face to face. To you, O God, mighty fortress, mothering hen, sheltering spirit. Be all worship and praise now and forever, Amen. And now together, we pray with the confidence of the beloved of God, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This blood, this bread that we break, is the bread of life, given for you. And the cup that we share is a cup of promise. Given for you. Now, friends, a reminder that in the United Methodist Church, all are welcome at this table. It's not our table. It's not Bradley's table. This is the table of the one who wants us to gather in. So I invite you, wherever you are in your faith, 
whether you feel worthy or you're not quite so sure, come forward because all God wants is to gather us in. I invite you to come forward.
us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this mystery in which you have given yourself to us. You have raised up in us a miracle among us, a gift of nourishment and beauty, a gift of forgiveness and deep trust in us. Encouraged now not by our worth, worth, worthiness, but by your grace in us, we follow you. We wait to be gathered in, in the power of your spirit and ministry to the world. Amen. Let us stand together. And the kids are here, and I say, um, hold your arms out like you love each other and you can hug each other and gather each in one to another. And now, friends, may the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the communion with the Holy Spirit bless, guard, and keep you this day and always, go in peace. So the word for this week is light, and you'll be receiving something as you leave that is signifying light for you to carry with you throughout the week. But light is about being gathered in to Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to let that happen this week, because there you will find light, and there you will become light to the world. Go in peace. <laughs>